Um, me, it's an honor for me to be here, first time, Highland Park, New Jersey. And um, we are in a special time of the year that we actually finishing the Torah. The last parsha in the Torah is Parshat Vezot Abracha, as everyone knows. And in the parsha, there are so many things. I want to emphasize in one thing that is in the beginning of the parsha. And uh, let's see the first two few psukim. <coughs> it says, "Vezot Abracha Asher Berach Moshe Ish Haelokim Et Bnei Yisrael Ifnei Mutu." So this is the title actually of the vast majority of the parasha. The blessing that Moshe Rabbeinu gave to the nation and in particular to each Shevet, each tribe, in a way designing the mission of this tribe during the long journey of the Jewish nation in the history, as Yaakov Avinu did first, before, at the end of Sefer Bereshit. So this is the beginning. We are going to emphasize on the second Pesach. Vayomer, Hashem misinai ba, vezarach misair lamo, hofia me'ar paran ve'ata merivevot kodesh, mimino esh dat lamo. When Moshe Rabbeinu about to just <coughs> depart from Klal Yisrael, of course, he summarized the main thing that he did with them, aside from taking them out of Mitzrayim, getting the Torah in our Sinai. So this is the first Pasuk, after the opening. He speaks about Sinai, about Mamad of Sinai, the revelation at Sinai. Hashem came from Sinai, but we have to understand the words. Because it's not mentioned only Sinai here, it's mentioned in other two places. Misinai ba Hashem misinai ba Hashem came from Sinai, <coughs> but he mentioned over here the zarach miseir lamo, hofia mehar paran. Atam rivavot kodesh that also back to Sinai, but seir and paran are not in the same location. And actually, what is he referring to when he mentions seir and paran? So we speak again about the nation. In the next pasuk, Af chovev amim kol kedoshav biyadecha vehem tuku leraglecha yisam idabrotecha. And the fourth pasuk speaks about the Torah. Torah tziva lanu Moshe, Morasha, Kehilat Yaakov. This is the summary of actually what he did. What was his mission? To bring us, to give us the Torah from Hashem in Har Sinai. As I said, we're going to emphasize on the second pasuk, which is, Vayomer Hashem Sinai ba vezarach miseir lamo ofia mehar paran veata merivevot kodesh. Mimino esh dat lamo. Esh dat, actually it's four words, seems like one word, actually it's two words, esh dat. Dat is a law, law of fire, law of fire. Mimino, that's referring, says Rashi, bring the Medrash, to the Torah was written be'esh shchora al gabe'esh levana, black fire on a white fire. We have no understanding whatsoever what is this. But that way, it's mentioned over here that Hashem wrote the Torah in his right hand. Esh dat lamo. Okay, let's start from Rashi. It's extra to say that Every time Rashi mentions anything about any Pasuk is from a former sources, which is a Midrashim usually. So let's see what Rashi says about this Pasuk. Vayomer, Hashem is Sinai Ba. Patach tchila bishvacho shel makum. Because the first Pasuk talk about what Moshe Rabbeinu wants to say to the nation. And then he goes to Hashem. Hashem is Sinai Ba. So says Rashi, Patach bitchila bishvacho shel makom. That he came with rivevot, meaning many malachim that came with him. This is shvacho shel makom. Ve'achar kach patach bitzrachehem shel Yisrael. The needs, or as we said, designing the mission 
of each one of the tribes in the, in the journey of Klal Yisrael during the history. Now, when he gives the Shevach to Hashem, Yesh bo hazgarat zchut li Yisrael. It's not two things. He speaks about praising Hashem, and then in the praising of Hashem, he mentioned, hinted, the merit of Yisrael. ובשבח שפתח בו יש בו הזכרת זכות לישראל, וכל זה דרך ריצוי הוא. דרך ריצוי מינינג, to explain why it should be this way, that they will get, get the, the nation will get the bracha. כלומר, כדאי הם אלו שתחול עליהם הברכה. So, in the praise words that he says to Hashem, there are a justification why the bracha is... Uh, they, they get it in, with rights. So what is it? Now we go back to explain the Sinai and the Seir and the Paran. Hashem is Sinai Bai, Yatsa Likratam, Kshebao Lit Yatsev Betachtit Ahar, Kechatana Yotse Lakbil Pnei Akala. Shenemar Likrata Elokim, Vayotse Moshe Ta'am Likrata Elokim, Lamadnu She Yatsa Kenegdam. So it was a, a marching that the Hassan came to toward the Kala, the Kala toward, came to the Chatan, uh, uh, the Kala is Klal Israel, the, the Chatan is Hashem. Okay, that's Misinai Ba. Misinai Ba meaning actually in Muhammad of Sinai, they came and he came, okay, the, the description. That's Sinai and that's very un understood. But what the story with Seir? V'zarach Misair Lamu, שפתח לבני שעיר שיקבלו את התורה ולא רצו. Now, a little bit of history. אברהם, יצחק ויעקב, our forefathers, right? But from them, we have two nations that come, from, one from Avram, one from Yitzhak, that actually <coughs> went away from the way of Avram and Yitzhak and Yaakov. From Avram was Ishmael, and Ishmael was dwelling in Har Seir, I'm sorry, in Paran, in Midbar Paran, Ishmael from Avram, and Yitzchak has a sub that also went away to Har Seir. So he speaks about Ishmael and a sub that came from Avram and Yitzchak, and he, He mentioned like this, וזרח מסעיר למה שפתח לבני סעיר שיקבלו את התורה ולא רצו. He mentioned here Asa before Ishmael, even though Ishmael was one generation before, but he started from Asa. And it says that when Hashem gave us the Torah, he first went to Asa, בני סעיר, which is Asa, offer to them the Torah, before he offered the Torah to us, and they refused to accept it. So when Hashem came from Sinai, it was after he was visiting, quote, quote, uh, so to say, Bnei Seir, offer them the Torah, and they say, no, it's not for us. So of course, Rashi, yeah, Rashi will relate to Midrashim, we will see the Midrashim later to understand it better, but that's what he said here. Be aware of the word of the two words, Zarach ve'ofia. Zarach is radiate. Hofia is appear, but appear with power. Hofia. So about Seir it says Zarach. Ve'zarach mi Seir lamo, she'patach livnei Seir she'ikablu et ha'tura ve'lo ratzu. Hofia lahem mehar paran, she'alach sham, After her sale, he went to Paran, and if you know the geography, you know the geography of the Middle East? Now it's in the news. Okay? Um, at the south of Eretz Israel, you have uh, Yam HaMelech, the Dead Sea, right? So, right in the, in the east bend, uh, is... Uh, In the east side of Yam HaMelech, in the south of Yam HaMelech, in the east, this is Har Seir. Over there were the Edomites, the sons of Esav was dwelling. Midbar Paran 
is a piece of desert in the Sinai Desert. If this is the peninsula of uh, Sinai, Chatzia uh, Sinai, the peninsula of Sinai. So the north part of the desert, the north east, is Midbar Paran. So they were close to each other, Edom and, and Ishmael, Esav and Ishmael. So it seems like Hashem made a journey. He went from east to west, from Edom to, to Paran, and then he went to Har Sinai, which is at the, pro no one really knows where Har Sinai is, where the mountain of Sinai, but it seems like next to Refidim, which is at the, close to the edge of the peninsula of uh, Sinai Desert. Okay. After he was by the, the, the Edomites, he went to Har Paran, and they also refused. They refused. And he came, Atta, come to Israel, Laam Israel, Mirivivot Kodesh, Vesha, Vimo Mikzat Rivivot Malache Kodesh, Velo Kuram, Velo Rubam. He bring with him entourage of angels, but not all of them, and not even most of them. ולא כדרך בשר ודם שמראה כל כבוד עושרו ותפארתו ביום חופתו. מעמד הר סיני was actually the wedding, ביום חתונתו וביום שמחת ליבו, יום חתונתו זה מתן תורה. So usually a wealthy, uh, wealthy חתן bring all to show, to show his, his status. So הקדוש ברוך הוא bring מרגבבות קודש. מה is from, not all, okay? מימינו אש דת, שהייתה כתובה מאז לפניו באש שחורה על גבי אש לבנה. Black fire on a white fire. נתן להם בלוחות כתב ימינו, יד ימינו. That's also a medrash, that when he, Hashem wrote the Dibros on the Luchot, he wrote it with his right hand. מימינו. אש דת למו? דבר אחר, אש דת כתרגומו, שניתנה להם מתוך האש. Not the way Hashem write it, but it was from the fire. Hashem gave us the Torah, ודברו שמעת מתוך האש, from the fire. Okay. So, now, let's go a little bit deeper. Why it has to be mentioned now, in the last day of his life, when he summarized the big event of Mamad of Sinai, what's so important to mention Seir and Ishmael. The Vilna Goen says the following, and we will go to this deeper, but let's see first what's written in the Aderet Eliyahu on this Pasuk. Hashem is in Aiba, Shezachu Mechamat Atzman Bishvil Shamru Naaseve Nishma. What was the merit that Rashi also hinted that it was, they have justification to, gi to get this bracha. What was the justification? What was the merit? The fact that they said, Naaseh ונשמה. Naaseh ונשמה. וזרח מסעיר, כמו שאמרו בגמרא, says the, the Vilna Goen, he brings the Medrash in slight different, but very important, the, the changes that, or, or the, 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 this version of the Medrash that he has. כמו שאמרו בגמרא ובספרי, כשרצה הקדוש ברוך הוא ליתן תורה לישראל, החזירה על כל אומה ולשון. So the Medrash says that Hashem offered it to all the nations. Rashi bring only Seir and uh, Ishmael and Edom. But we have to know that we have 17 nations in the world. We're going to read it in not this week Parsha, but next week Parsha, about Migdal Bavel. And Hashem divided the, the, the nations at the time of when they built the Tower of, of Bavel. He divided them, as it's mentioned in this week, Parsha, not even this week, the Parashat Azinu that we're going to uh, gonna recite on, 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 on Simchat Torah, on, sorry, last week, Parashat Azinu. It says, Yatsev gvulot amim lemispar bnei Israel. The number of the nations in the world was parallel to the, the number of bnei Yaakov that went with him. To Egypt, to Mitzrayim, and there is a reason for this. So, 
כשרצה הקדוש ברוך הוא ליתן תורה לישראל, החזירה על כל אומה ולשון. First, before he came to us, he went to all 70 nations, and over them the Torah. הוא בא אל ישמעאל, אמרו לו, תורה מה כתיב בה? What, what are you actually offering us? Torah are instructions, directions, how to live, what's the right values. So he quote to them the Ten Commandments, and he got to Lot enough. אמר להם Lot enough. אמרו, אי אפשר. It's not, we, we are not going to stand in this. It's not, there is no way for us to commit for that. It's against our nature. So listen to what the Medrash says. When he came to Bnei Ishmael, he offered them the Torah, they asked what's written on there. He told them, Lot in Af, Amru lo, Yi Efshar, Tna Li Yisrael. And this is very interesting. They didn't say, okay, it's not for us. They have a suggestion. Go from all the nations, there are a nation that will accept it. Bnei Yisrael. Very interesting why they said that. Okay. Vechulam natnu lehem matanot. <laughs> they feel uncomfortable that they're refusing to the offer of Hashem. So they say, you know what? There is a nation in the world who will accept it instead of us, and we owe them something for this because they accept the Torah instead of us. And they gave them presents, each one of the nations. Okay? וכולם נתנו להם מתנות. דהיינו עשה וישמעאל. What's the היינו עשה וישמעאל? כולם are the, all the 70s, right? On the 70s. Why mention here again emphasizing עשה ונשמעאל? ונתנו להם עשייה ושמיעה שאמרו נעשה ונשמע, and here there is huge things. What are the gifts, the presents that they gave them? The עשייה and שמיעה. Okay, I will say a few things, you know, in general, to summarize big things around each one of the, those things. <clears throat> Ramchal says that when Hashem created the world and created Adam, as we're going to really learn again, Parashat Bereshit, Adam got a mission. To run the show. Meaning, after I created everything, says Hashem, now I'm going to create another creature, but this creature will not just be a regular creature. He will be the manager. I'm going to give the entire world in his hands, and he's going to run it. This is V'yirdu B'dgatayam. What will be so special about this creature? This creature will be exclusively has things that no other creature has. No other creature means no other creature, even not the angels that, in a way, spiritually are higher from us. And this is the free will. The free will, there is nothing like this in the entire nature, in the entire creation. There are laws of nature, there are physical laws of nature and spiritual laws of nature. And every element, if it's physical or spiritual, are obligated to the laws of nature. Meaning they do not have free will. They're programmed to act, managed according to the program. They're not free willers. The only exception is Adam. Adam is a free will. And this is the meaning that we are Betzele Melokim. Betzele Melokim, there are some similarity between us and Hashem. And because Hashem is almighty and no one tell him what to do, he's doing with his own will, so to say, he gave this to us. Of course, in certain area, we cannot do whatever you, we want. We cannot just, okay, I have a free will. I want to live a million years. That's not in your free will. It's not included. But in some many significant things, you have a free will. Meaning, you could behave this way, or just the opposite. And it's up to your will. This is exclusive to being a human being. So, Ramchas says that Adam Arishan was the one who should actualize, first time, his free will. And Hashem gave him a commandment, and he used his free will 
He could listen to Hashem, but he has a free will. So he said, I could not. Okay, I'll use it. And he refused. He listened to the other side. Then the entire world went to a certain path. Was 20 generations, again, we're going to read this in the next two Shabbatot, Parashat Bereshit and Parashat Noach, 10 generations from Adam to Noach, and all of them continue with this bad, negative path until the Mabul, and then another, two, 20, another 10 generations, and they also continue in the negative path, and then come the time of Migdal Bavel. Until Avraham Avinu, Avraham Avinu was the first one who saw that the world's going to a very not good place, direction and he decided to take on himself to bring back Adam to choose right. From Avraham come Yitzchak, but not just Yitzchak, also Esav, uh, Ishmael, and Bnei Ketura. But Bnei Ketura, let, let's leave them aside now, Ishmael. Then from Yitzchak came Yaakov and Esav, and Ishmael and Esav wanted to go a different way than Avram, the father of Ishmael, than Yitzhak, the father of Esau. Now, as you probably remember, I don't know if you pay attention to this. Yitzhak and Avram likes their sons that went off the derech. Yitzchak for sure, it says, right? He likes him. And he wants to give him the bracha, the blessing. Without Rivka, the blessing was going, apparently, from Yitzchak to Esav. Same way, in a way, in a way, same thing happened with Avram. When Sarah realized that Ishmael is not the right person to be the role model for her little son, Yitzchak, she demanded from Avram to send him away, and the Torah says that he felt very bad about this. And Hashem told him, listen to her, she, she's right. So we find that Avram and Yitzchak has some connections to those sons that went off the derech. So there are big, big things around this. We have to know that Avram is the attribute of chesed. He is, represent the attribute of chesed the way Hashem running the world. Avram is chesed. Titen emet Yaakov chesed l'Avram. Yitzchak is gvura, which is midat adin, the attribute of justice. And that was their nature of Avram and Yitzchak. Yaakov, Yoshev O'alim, the Yaakov Ishtav Yoshev O'alim, is sitting, dwelling in both tents of Avram and Yitzchak. So he made a combination between the Midat HaChesed and Midat HaRachami and, and Midat HaDin. Therefore, he was the most balanced because he has this and this. That was Yaakov. It says in the Sfarim, that Yishmael inherit from Avram Avinu Midat HaChesed, but he take it without any proportion to extreme that make it negative. He give Chesed when in places that he should not give. And that would make him so negative and so bad. That means that he went off the derech. Yitzchak inherited to Esav the Midat Adin, the Gvura Midat Adin, but he took it again to extreme, without any balance, to, to being, become a killer, a murderer. So in the Sfarim it says that Yishmael is psolet, shel Midat HaChesed shel Yaakov, and Esav is psolet of Midat Adin shel Yitzchak. Therefore, they feel connected to them because they saw their potential. Now, we have to know, 
every human being has a free will. But everyone is different. The balance of the attribute that you were born with are different. There is now no two people since Hashem created the world to the end of days, not even identical twins that have the same qualities of their midot. <laughs> Everyone is individual. But each one, wherever Hashem gives this person, has the potential to overcome the negative things within him with the positive, even Ishmael and even Esau. So Avram saw the positive. He will look at the bright side of the potential of Ishmael. Yitzchak saw the bright side, the potential of Esav, and therefore they wanted him, them to continue to be metaken. But at the end, they just with their free will took it to the extreme and went off. What was the potential? I'm just saying all of this in order to explain what the, what the Vilna Gaon said in the last line. So, so the midrash. Says the Gra, Those are the things that they contribute as a present, as a gift to Klal Israel. And it's very, very important in that why, you know, we're talking about Mahmoud Ar Sinai, what was the big schut of Mahmoud Ar Sinai? That we accept the Torah, we, the Jewish nation. What did we say? Nasa Venishma. Says the Groh that the Nasa Venishma came from the presence that Esau gave and Ishmael gave. Let me add to this another Midrash in order to understand this. Midrash Rabbah Bereshit. Amar Rabbi Yossi Berabi Hanina, Arba Midot Neemru Beshemot. Every name, name is a very essential thing. A name, a name of a person, a name of anything. You have to know, again, we're going to relearn Parshat Bereshit, right? When Hashem created Adam, pay attention to this. Before Hashem commanded Adam not to eat from Etzadat Tovara, before he created Chava, he gave him a mission. And what was the mission? He take all the animals and all the creatures and he passed them in front of him, and he asked them to name them. And it says, V'chol asher ikra lo adam nefesh chaya hu shmo. He passed it in the highest mark. He did the right thing. He gave, he knew to give the right name to each one of the creatures. Name is a big thing. Name, actually, the real name is the definition of the essence of the one who got the name. So the matter speaks about names. And the matter says the following. There are four possibilities of names. There are people that their names are very nice name. Nice name, it's not in the sound. The meaning, the meaning of the name. Nice. And they do according to their name. The name is is nice and they acting nicely uh, according to their name. Yesh sheshmotehem keurim umaasehem keurim. The name is, is, is negative and the actions is according. But there are people. Yesh sheshmotehem keurim umaasehem naim. The name is, seems not negative but the action, the free will that this person did, even though he has this name, are very nice actions, nice deeds. The names are nice, but people do not act according to their name. And they do just the opposite. Now, after all of this, the, the, the Medrash bring an example. For each one of them, I just quote the first one. What are examples of people who have nice name, but the actions are not according? Okay? Shmotem na'im umasem keurim. Eisav. Eisav and Ishmael. Now let's explain first what Eisav is. Why Eisav called Eisav? For this you have to know Hebrew. I will translate, but you have to, if you know Hebrew, it's amazing. Go to the Pasuk that describe the Leida, the, the born, 
the delivery of Yitzchak, of, uh, of uh, Yaakov and Esav. So it says the following, Vayetzea Rishon Admoni, Kulo Kader Etzear, that was Esav, Admoni meaning red, red hair, not head, hair, Kulo, <laughs> because he was hairy from toe to top. Kulo Kader Etzear, Vayikru Et Shmo Esav. ואחרי כן יצא אחי וידו אוחזת בעקב עשו, ויקרא שמו יעקב. So we understand clearly why יעקב called יעקב. יעקב, because how do you say hill? עקב, right? So יעקב was holding the hill of עשו, that was, caused his name to be יעקב, because הוא אוחז בעקבו של עשו. But why עשו called עשו? Because he was hairy. From toe to head. He was hairy. Could you imagine, like, uh, imagine, imagine a baby born like this? It's like a little monkey with, you know, hairy all over, red head, red hair all over. Now, because it's not natural, not, even hairy people, they become hairy, you know, after, after they be become teens, right? Not babies. So that's the reason why he was called a sav. Esav Melishon Dan, Asui, Dan. I will say his name should be Dan. But in Dan meaning Asui. Asui, Esav, that's why he was named Esav. That's why. So what's the depth of this? Esav grew up, the next Psukim explained this, Vayigdelu Anari, Vayi Esav Ish Yodea Tzayid Ish Sadeh, ויעקב איש תם יושב אוהלים. When they grew up, those twin babies, Esav and Yaakov, Esav became an act, active man, a man of the field, a man of action, meaning his power was his action, כוח העשייה. כוח העשייה, that was his, his power. Yaakov was uh, more intellectual, spiritual, sitting in the base madrash, learning Torah. Okay? So what do we learn from here? Let's go back to the Midrash. There is a name. What's the name? The name is Asui, Asiya. This is very good. If you are a doer, a person of action, you could do good things. This is, this is a good name. The name is nice. Says the Midrash. Here's the example. Shmotem naim umasem keurim. Esav shmo Esav. Ve'enose. He's not doing the right things. He's doing very negative things. But he has a power to do. He's a doer. He's a doer. When Hashem offered his descendants the Torah, the Torah demand to do. Do this, do this, don't do this. So Esav said, no, I, I, I have the power of doing, of action, but I'm not interested to do the right thing. This is the, the, an example of one who has a good name, but wrong actions. That's Esav. Yishmael. Yishmael. Why Yishmael called Yishmael? Ki shama Hashem Eloniach. It's a beautiful name that Hashem hear people who are in a problem, like Hagar, the mother of Yishmael at the time, Shama Hashem Eloniech. So it's a very beautiful name that Hashem is supervise everything. Listen, we say it in the davening every, every day, three times. Shomea Tfila. Hashem listen to, the, to Yishmael. So in the Medrash bring it as another example of someone who has very good name. Yishmael, meaning he has to listen to what Hashem says, but ain't no Shomer. Again, when Hashem gave him the Torah, he said, okay, it's not good for, uh, I, mean, I, I do not want to be obligated to this. It's against what my desire, so I do not want it. <coughs> and this is the meaning that they gave this potential that they refused to do themselves. They say, you know what? Give the Torah to Israel. They do not have what we have, the power of Asiyah, the power of Shmi'ah. But we will give it to them. We are not, 
For us, it's useless because we are not going to use it. If they will accept the Torah, let's give it to them. And with this, with this, we said, Na Those are the, the presents. Those are the gifts. With this, we said, Na se mikoach asiyah shel Esav, venishma mikoach hashmiyah shel Ishmael. That's what the Gros says. This is amazing. And that's why, in the first pasuk in the, in, in the brach, v'zasa bracha, Moshe Rabbeinu wants to bless the Jewish nation. Why he mentioned that Hashem came and offered the Torah to Seir and to Ishmael? Now we understand it. In a way. In a way we understand it. We understand that for sure better than before. But let's go even deeper. <clears throat> so Rashi says, they deserve it. Hashem is Sinai Ba Vezarach, Patach Tchila Bishvachosh El Makom, ופתח בשבח שיש בו אזכרת זכות של ישראל. What's the אזכרת זכות? What's the זכות that mentioned over here, the merit? That they said נאסה ונשמע. And they said נאסה ונשמע because Hashem went to Esav offer and they refused. Because he went to Ishmael offer and they refused. They gave the potential of that they do not want to actualize to Klal Yisrael. But... It's not that simple. Later on, they become our West enemies. When they understood what they missed and that we are now taking their power and using it for leading the world to actualize purpose, they hated us very much until today, until today. Very interesting. Again, there are many nations in the world. There are 70 nations, actually, according to the Torah, not according to how many people have delegated in the United Nations. Uh, there are 70 only. <laughs> you know, one nation could divide to three nations, but it's, it's artificial. There are 70 exactly, and there is a reason for this number. It's very interesting that if you take big nations that not belong, apparently, for sure, not to Ishmael, and in a way, even not to Esav. Take, for example, China. The three dominant religions in the world during the history are, for sure, the Jews, Torah, the abusive of the Jews, of the Judaism, which is the Christianity, that come from us, but they ruined everything. They, they, from the Torah, they, they, they build a whole false theory from our Nevi'im. They twist the Psukim and they create a big religion, a big religion. Christianity. Later on come Islam that except basically it's based also in the Torah. But twist it completely. They deny all the Nevi'im. They said there is all the Nevi'im are not relevant anymore. There is a new Navi, a Naya Navi, which is Muhammad and anyone who will not listen to him we have to kill. And they do it. They do it. They did it. They want to do it. That's their sheaf until today. Christians, don't get mixed up. It seems today, like today, they are our friends. No, they're not. We have a good memory. We remember the Inquisition. We remember, we remember, they did terrible things to the Jewish nation. And even now, when they kill friends, that's just kill. They, they want us to, to, to be Christians like them. Anyway, the both created religions that the purpose of their religions is to come instead the truth that we got from Sinai. And the source of this is what we just learned. They regret giving those gifts of 
Nase v'nishma to us. And they become our worst enemy, not ours. The truth. We represent Hashem, we represent the truth. And this is what's going on in the world today. Now we find out during the history that we suffered a lot. First, first from the Christians. Started with the destruction of Baicheni by the Romans. And then they established, after the destruction of Baicheni, this big religion in Rome, in the Vatican. And they caused us terrible, terrible things during the history. Later on appear Ishmael. By the way, why you wake up so late? A reason for everything. A reason for this. It's mentioned in the Zohar that he will be quiet until a certain time and then he will get up. And we're talking about 1400 years ago. And since then, they are our worst enemy. They hate the truth. You know, when, when you invent a fake truth, you could exist with your theory as long as the real truth is not revealed. If there is someone who claims to a truth that's different from your truth, it's make all your truth or your, or your theory under dangers. Therefore, they have to eliminate anyone who said that the truth is not what they think. <clears throat> If we go back to our parsha, Moshe Rabbeinu, at the last day of his life, maybe even the last moments, he gave a bracha to Klal Yisrael. And he said there in hints, actually think that if you look, look retroactive back, you will see that he, he, saw the, he summarized the history since his days until today. Esav and Ishmael. Question is, from our point of view, as from Jews, there is a mitzvah to try to understand Darkei Hashem. Try to understand. Of course, with a human being, you could not really understand HaCheker Eloka Timtza, Im Tachlit Shaddai Timtza, Ki Gavhu Machshavotai Mi Machshavotechem V'Dardrachet and Novi said that there is no way that we could understand the Shem. But there is a mitzvah to understand what we could understand. So the question is, how Hashem allowed this to happen? So many Jews suffered, killed in the very the worst ways by the Christians, by the Islams until today. People do not really understand what's going on. You have to know what's happening now in the world is so dangerous. It's dangerous to the Christians from the, is the Muslims. And it's way more in dangerous to us. People try because they so, I don't know how to even call it. So living in a movie. They do not seeing the reality. Not want to face reality. You have to understand the concept of Islam as a religion that no one that not Muslim in the entire world has a right to live, to exist. And you know, if you look at Europe today, they went to Europe because those stupid Europeans accept them. Naively thinks they will <laughs> mingle with them. No way. They want to turn Europe Muslim. They want to put the Sharia in in London, in Paris, in, in, they want to, in the same way as in America. Now they do not have the power, but they, this is their ideology. And the Jews are the worst enemy of them, because they are the original that, according to them and according to the Christians, it's over, it's history, it should not exist anymore. So the question is, how Hashem let this to happen, and why? So I'm not going to go to the why, because it's a whole big thing, but how, where it's leading. So I want to go to, I'll skip here a few things in order to get there. I want to go to a Rambam. The Rambam is in Hilchas Malachim, 
And the Rambam, this part of the Rambam, was out of print because of the censor. Because he speaks about sensitive things relating to the Christians and the Muslims. Therefore, for many years it was out of print. But now, with the new Rambams, they put it in. It's in Perek Yud Aleph, the last halachot of Perek Yud Aleph in Hilchot Melachim. So he speaks about Christianity and Islam, and look what he said. Af Yeshu Anotzri Shedima Sheyeh Mashiach. Yeshu that was pretend that he is a Messiah. Veneherag Beveidin, Kvar Nitnaba Bo Daniel. So yeah, again, he said very, very sensitive things. Don't say it to the Christians. You know, their theory is that Jesus was, Yeshu was killed by the Romans because the Jews give him to them, to the Romans, right? And this is their theory. It's not true. We killed Yeshu. The Sanhedrin killed Yeshu because he was a Masitu Madiach, and that's also mentioned in the different places in the Gemara, but it's took out by the censor. In Masechet Sanhedrin it mentioned, different other places, Masechet Sanhedrin uh, in two places, in other pl places, in Masechet Sota. Yeshu was killed because he was a Jew that was Masitu Madiach Lavodah Zarah, and he was killed as Masitu Madiach by the Sanhedrin. So Rambam mentioned this here, you know, in two words. Veneherag beveidin. Yeshu anotzri shedima sheyye mashiach. He thought that he is a messiah. Veneherag beveidin. Kvar nitnabab bo Daniel. He said the Nevi'im speaks about it. Says Rambam, it's not me. Daniel itnabab, given a vuah about it before it happened. Shenemar uvne pritze amcha yinasu laamid chazon venichshalu. So Daniel says that from the Jewish people will come some pritzi, meaning Jews who are off Judaism, portzim, meaning they break out, and they will have a uh, strive to give a vision, venichshalu, and they will fail. And he explained, what he did, or what happened because of Jesus, was the ultimate fail. They quote from the Psukim and the Nevoah, right? The Psukim and the Nevoah speak about Geula. Geula to who? To the Jewish nation. That what's the job of the Mashiach? To redeem the Jews from the bad situation that they were in Galut, right? Bring them back to Eretz Israel. And cause them to learn and operate the Torah, וזה, and this, Yeshu, גרם לאבד ישראל בחרב, the fact, if you take the results, גרם לאבד ישראל, how many Jews was killed because of the theory of Christianity, ולפזר שאריתם, ולהשפילם, spread them and put them in exile, and despise them, ולהחליף את התורה, Christianity just take out, say the entire Torah is not relevant anymore, we have a new things to do, ולהטעות רוב העולם לעבוד אלוה מבלעדי השם. And they cause all the people in the world to do אוהב דעבוד הזרה, because they're now bowing down. For them, Jesus is not just Messiah, he is God. When they say my God, they mean Jesus. And this is כפירה ממש, for the goyim. Because the goyim should, the first mitzvah of the seven, שבעה, שבע מצוות בני נוח, is not to bow down or consider God, anyone but Hashem. Even for the goyim. So it was all complete fail failure. That's what the Rambam says about uh, Christianity. Aval, and here's the big things. Look at that. Aval machshavot bore olam en koach ba'adam le'asigam. As I quote before in Yeshayahu, ki lo machshavotai machshavotechem velo darkechem drachai ki kigvo ha'shamay me'al ha'aretz ken gavhu mach. But the Ramban says, but if you look at this, you will see a direction. What so to say in the mind of God? 
כי לא דרכינו דרכיו ולא מחשבותינו מחשבותיו. Now he says the following, וכל הדברים האלו, all those phenomenas, של ישו הנוצרי, ושל זה הישמעאלי שעמד אחריו, מינינג מוחמד, אינן אלא דרך ליישר, אינן אלא ליישר דרך למלך המשיח. And this is very interesting what he says here. That the entire thing, Hashem led them to happen, Of course, it's terrible, it's wrong, completely wrong, but there is some bright side of it. What? Le'yashar derech, to create the path for the Mashiach. That's going to redeem not just Klal Yisrael, but the entire world. Now we explain. Ule'takenet ha'olam kulo la'avod et Hashem be'yachad. She'ne'emar, and he quote the Pasuk in Tzfaniya, כי אז זה יהפוך אל עמים שפה ברורה לקרוא כולם בשם השם ולעובדו שכם אחד. צפניה פרק ג'. So this is the נבואה for the end of days. And look at the words. אז יהפוך אל עמים שפה ברורה. What is connected to? מגדל בובר. What happened in מגדל בבל? How it started the story of מגדל בבל. ויהי כל הארץ שפה אחת ודברים אחדים. They spoke one language. And they were all on one mission. And then, because they want to take the power of speech that could unify it in order to separate between the creation and the creator, in Migdal Boven, Hashem said, that what you want to do with this power of communication, of dibur, of talking? I'm going to take it from you. And Hashem took from them the communication power and they do not understand it. each other, right? This is what happened there. That happened in the Chet of Migdal Bavel, and that created what? 70 nations. Yatsev Gvulot Amim Lemispar Bnei Yisrael. At the end of days, will be a reverse in this. Ki az, then, when the time will come, Ehefoch El Amim Safa Brura. They will go back to one language. For what? Likro Kulam B'Shem Hashem Ulovdo Shechem Echad Just the opposite of what they tend to do when they build the Migdal Bavel. Now, when it's happened, when this is going to happen, when Mashiach will come, when the Geula time will be, right? Says the Rambam that all this process in the history is just to create the path for Mashiach. When things go back, that all the nations of the world will do will be of the Hashem. Now, he explained in the next Salacha, Keitzad, how it's going to happen, and why Christianity and Islam contributing to this without their really mean to do it, but Hashem is doing this behind the scene. Kvar nitmala ha'olam kulo midivrei ha-Mashiach, u midivrei ha-Torah u midivrei ha-Mitzvot. Before Christianity, talking about 2,000 years ago approximately, all the nations of the world were idol worshippers. They were dumb and stupid, and they have no concept that the entire world will be redeemed, and the concept of Mashiach, that there will be one person that Hashem will send to put the entire world together. They have, it was out of their, they, they could not even relate to this. But after Christianity, even though they twist everything, but they went to the very far places in the world, that's the mission of Christianity, and they gave them Tanakh. They gave them the Bible, right? And what they told them, that there is a concept called Messiah. Even though they're talking about the wrong Messiah, but the concept of Messiah, which is a person that will be sent by God to unify the world. That is said, this is the bright side of the terrible things that happened by Christianity and Islam. Keitzad, כבר נתמלא העולם כולו מדברי המשיח, ומדברי התורה, ומדברי המצוות. They teaching in their churches, and Islam also, that it was a revelation of Hashem in Ma'amad Ha'asinai. And he gave Torah. They know about the Ten Commandments that we, the Jewish nation, got. Okay, they knew about this and they spread this information in the world. So, they know about the Torah, they know the mitzvot, and it got to the very far places, very isolated islands, 
ובעמים רבים ערלי לב. And many nations that was without it, no connection to the Torah. והם נושאים ו... ונותנים בדברים אלו ובמצוות התורה, אלו אומרים מצוות אלו אמת היו, כבר בטלו בזמן הזה, ולא היו נוהגות לדורות. So here the, he goes to their twisted theory. I mean, yeah, Hashem gave those mitzvahs, but it's not relevant anymore. But they know that there is Hashem, He gave mitzvot, and there is one day Mashiach will come. Without Christianity, those very far nations will never know that. ואלו אומרים דברי נסתרות יש בהם ואינן כפשוטם, הוא כבר בא משיח וגילה סתריהם, למשיח קאמס, you know, Christianity has a big problem with the concept of Messiah. Because according to the Nevim, משיח will come to give the redemption. So according to them, he came already. Where's the redemption? Where's the redemption? <laughs> 2,000 years after Jesus, we have no redemption. There is a lot of sorrow and suffering during the world, in the entire world. So what they said, second coming, you're going to come again. Once I have a, a friendly argument with a, someone, I don't know, a priest. So he tried to talk to me about, uh, about uh, these philosophical ideas the Bible presents. And he said, we have a lot in common. I said, okay. So... Uh, I asked him one question. Do you consider Jesus Mashiach, uh, God? Do you consider him God? He said, yes. I said, we have nothing in common. This is a pure idol worshiping. But when we talk about the Messiah idea, so I told him, listen, <laughs> according to you, he came, right? If he came, where's the goal or where's the redemption? He said, Oh, he's going to come again. So I told him, this we have in common. So you're waiting for him to come again, right? We're also waiting. Let's wait together and we'll see when he will come, who will be, he will be. Okay? Don't be surprised if it will not be Jesus. But let's wait together. So, that's their theories. Everything was right. The Jewish nation is the chosen people. They got the Torah. Hashem revealed himself only to one nation in the world, and those are the Jews. But things change. Now, what's going to happen? For, they're living with this, the Christianity for 2,000 years, Islam, 1,500 years, 14, 1,500 years. What's going to happen at the end of this? That's the last halacha in the Rambam over there. וכשיעמוד המלך המשיח באמת, ויצליח, וירום וינשא, מיד הם כולם חוזרים ויודעים ששקר נחלו אבותיהם. When the, Mashi- the real Mashiach will come, retroactively they understood that, okay, we thought that the Mashiach is this, but it's not this. But the Mashiach concept, they have the concept, right? Then they will do tshuva. כשיעמוד המלך המשיח באמת, ויצליח וירום וינשא מיד הם כולם חוזרים ויודעים ששקר נחלו אבותיהם ושנביאיהם ואבותיהם יטעו. The Christians and the Muslims. רמב״ם said that, but he didn't say that as, you know, I think so. Because he said clearly before, we do not know what Hashem, no human being could understand what in the mind of God. So why רמב״ם say this anyways? Because what he said over here, are clear psukim in the nevuah, and with that we'll conclude. There are two nevuot, in Yirmiyahu and in Zechariah. Look, what the Rambam says over here, and these words are clear in the words of the Navi Yirmiyahu. Yirmiyahu perek tezayin. Hashem, the Jewish nation says to Hashem, Hashem, Uzi uma Uzi, He is our strength. Umnusi biyom tzara, when it will be a day of trouble, he will protect us. Now we say the following, says Yirmiyahu Anavi. Elecha, to you, to Hashem. Goim yavou me'afse aretz. Nation will come from the very far places on earth. Ve'yomru, what they will say. Ach sheker nachalu avoteinu. When the real Mashiach will, will, the truth will be revealed, they will... Retroactively, we understand that they lived in lie for more than 2,000 years. Our parents gave us a lie. It's all nonsense. 
But he explained in the next pasuk, what is the lie? Hayaselo Adam Elohim vehem alo Elohim. And you could read it this way. Could you take a human and make it God? And actually he's not God? And that is exactly what the Christians do. They took a human being and say he is God. Hayaselo Adam Elohim vehem alo Elohim. That the lie that's going to be revealed at the end of days. לכן הנני מודיעם בפעם הזאת עוד ימת ידי ואת גבורתי, he relate to מלחמת גוג ומגוג, וידעו כי שמי השם, and there is nothing to do to מוחמד and to Jesus, and they will know the truth. So what the Rambam says actually is the clear פסוקים in here, in, uh, in ירמיהו. It's also mentioned in זכריה פרק ח', כה אמר השם צבאות עד אשר יבואו עמים. ויושבי ערים רבות, והלכו יושבי אחת אל אחת לאמור, נאלך הלוך לכלות את פני השם ולבקש את השם צבאות. אלך גם אני. ובאו עמים רבים וגויים עצומים לבקש את השם צבאות בירושלים. ולכלות את פני השם. כה אמר השם צבאות בימים ההם אשר יחזיקו עשרה אנשים מכל לשונות הגויים, ויחזיקו בכנף איש יהודי לאמור נאלך עמכם, כי שמענו אלוהים עמכם. So this gonna be our job at the end of days. All the going from all over the place. the world, will come to every, every Jew, teach us, teach us the Torah. We know that we got it wrong, so we want to know the real thing, so you should be our teacher. So, we're getting close, getting really close to this time, that everything collapsing, and the, when the truth will be revealed, we have a job, each one of us, we have to be a teachers. In order to be a teachers, we have to learn, because you cannot teach something that you do not know. So we understand the concept, to, to be mitchazek in the concept of the truth that we have. Baruch Elokeinu Shebra'anu Lichvodo, Hivdilanu Minatoim, Venatan Lanu Torah Temet. So this is the way Moshe Rabbeinu decided to end the Torah. Parashat Vezot Abracha. And he mentioned, he mentioned Christians, which is Edom, which is Esav, and he mentioned the Muslims, which is Seir. So we just went... From the beginning points, Koach HaAsiyah Shel Esav, Koach HaShmi'ah Shel Ishmael, and we took it, and we accept the Torah. And right now, because we got those presents from them, they hate us, but at the end of days, they're going to be very appreciate the fact that we are the one who knows the truth and going to be part of spreading it when the Mashiach will come. So this is the shiur that I could give. Thank you very much for your attention. And um, that's the way, you know, to go to Simcha's Torah. And if you understand it, you'll be super happy. Because we understand the power of Torah and what a big present Hashem gave us. So I recorded this uh, class, it will be Bezrat Hashem, on my website. So this is the website if you uh, want to rehear it or just give it to people who didn't have the chance to come to hear it now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.